These notes are on thermodynamics, specific heat, and calorimetry. So we first need to know the laws of the thermodynamics. The two, there are two laws that you need to know. The first is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. This is known as the law of conservation of energy. This is just like the law of conservation of mass that says that matter can either be created or destroyed. The second conservation or the second law of thermodynamics is that heat is going to move from hot to cold. It's just like if I had an ice cube in my hand, the heat from my hand is going to move into the ice cube. So it's moving from hot to cold. Energy is the capacity to do work or supply heat. Thermal chemistry is the study of heat changes driving chemical reactions and phase changes. So that's how we look at and see what is changing. Then we have specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of heat or energy that's required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Doesn't matter what substance, we're going to move one gram of it up one degree. Endothermic is a reaction that requires heat or energy. Three examples is melting, vaporization, and sublimation. Exothermic is a reaction that releases heat or energy. Some examples are freezing, condensing, and deposition. So we can measure heat loss or absorbed using calorimetry. Okay, we can have our specific heat. Our specific heat is the heat loss or gain. And we can measure it by taking the mass in grams times our specific heat multiplied by the change in temperature. Our mass in grams abbreviated as an M. Our specific heat is abbreviated as a C. And our change in temperature is delta T. Delta means change. Delta T is T final, so your final temperature, minus your T initial or your initial temperature. This condenses down to Q equals MC delta T. So in words, what this means is that if you know the mass and the specific heat of a compound and you measure its temperature change, you can calculate the change in heat. Change in heat is Q. We can have either endothermic or exothermic reactions because we're looking at heat and energy. If we have a positive Q, it's endothermic. Heat was required or gained in order for the system or the reaction to, to happen. A negative Q is an exothermic reaction. Heat was released. So an example, you have your example in your worksheet. It says that if 25 grams of liquid water is heated from 10 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, what is the heat change of the water in joules? They give you that the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And this is a constant that you should know. We'll use it multiple times. So to list out what variables I have, I've given my mass is 25 grams grams. My final temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. My initial temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. And my specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. It asked me what is the change in heat and that is Q. So I use my specific heat equation Q equals MC delta T. I plug in for M 25 C 4.18 and delta T, final, minus initial, 25 minus 10. That gives me 15. I multiply the three together. I get 1,567.5 joules. With using my sig figs, it's 1,600 joules. I have a positive Q, therefore it is endothermic. Practice problem number one reads that if you place 15 grams of ice, it's heated from negative 25 degrees Celsius to negative 5 degrees Celsius. What is the heat change of the water in joules? The specific heat of ice is 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now here we're looking at the heat change of the water, but we're given information about ice. The good thing to know is that Q for our system is equal and opposite to the Q for our surroundings. 
So whatever the change in energy or the energy required for this process to happen for the ice is just the opposite in magnitude for the water. So again, I write down my variables given, my mass of 15 grams, my initial temperature of negative 25 degrees Celsius, my final temperature of negative 5 degrees Celsius, my change in temperature, my final minus initial, so negative 5 minus negative 25 is like having an addition problem, so 20 degrees Celsius, and my specific heat of ice is given to me at 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. I plug in for my specific heat equation, my Q of ice is equal to mc delta T, m being 25 grams times my specific heat of 2.1 gram joules per gram degree Celsius, times my change in heat, which is positive 20 degrees Celsius. My Q of ice ends up being 630 joules. Again, my heat change in ice is proportional or equal to my opposite the heat change in water. So that means that if I have a positive 630 joules going into my ice to help it melt, that means that 630 joules are coming out of the water, therefore it's a negative because it's exothermic. Okay? So my Q of my water, my heat of my water, is negative 630 joules. It's exothermic. This relates into the transfer of heat. So, using my first law of thermodynamics, the conservation of energy, that energy or heat can either be created or destroyed, I have an example. I have a beaker of water and I have placed a hot piece of metal into cold water. So if I put my hot metal into cold water, what is going to happen to the heat? Where is it going to go? Well, the heat is first located in my hot metal and it's going to then move from my hot metal. It's going to go from hot to cold. That's my second law of thermodynamics. So the heat is going to come out of my metal into the cold water. So what gains heat? Well, my water is gaining heat. And what loses heat? Well, my piece of metal is going to lose the heat. Okay? But how far do they keep going? When do they stop? Okay? Well, the water is going to gain an equal amount of heat as the metal loses. So eventually the final temperature between the water and the metal is going to be the same. So the final temperature of water and metal is equal, therefore the temperatures are at an equilibrium between the two. We can call our metal the system, our surroundings, the water. Therefore the Q or the change in temperature of my system is equal in magnitude but opposite in sign since the negatives there of heat of my surroundings. So the change in heat of my metal is equal and opposite to the change in heat of my water. So let's put that into practice. Example number one says a piece of metal with a mass of 4.68 grams decreases its temperature from 90 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius when placed into 25 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of the metal? So I like to portion it out into metal and water. So my metal information I'm given is that I have a mass of 4.68 grams, an initial temperature of 90 degrees Celsius, a final temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. My water, I'm told, has a mass of 25, degree, or mass of 25 grams, Specific heat of 4.8 joules per gram degree Celsius. That's something that's always the same. We know that. My initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And I know that it's going to end where my metal ends because they established that equilibrium like noted before. So it's going to have a final temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So the final temperatures are always going to be equal. My metal, I need to know my change in heat. And I'm looking for my specific heat. But those are two things that I don't know, so I have to use my water to figure out one of them. Well, I know that the Q of my metal is equal and opposite to the Q of my water, so I can use my water's information to solve for Q and then change that to the Q of my metal. So I search for water first. Q is the equal to mc delta T. I plug in my variables of 25 grams, 4.18 gram, joules per gram degree Celsius, and my final temperature of 30 minus my initial temperature of 25 
When I plug that into my calculator, I get 522.5 joules. I know that my heat of water is equal and opposite to my heat of my metal. And so therefore, my heat of water is 522.5 joules. To be my metal, so that whatever my water is absorbing from my metal, my metal is giving off. So that means my metal is losing 522.5 joules. So now I can solve for my specific heat of my metal because now I know my Q, I know M, and I know my change in temperature. I rearrange my equation dividing both sides by M delta T. And I get my specific heat is equal to heat divided by mass times change in temperature. My specific heat, negative 522.5 joules, divided by my mass, 4.68 grams, times my change in temperature, just 30 minus 90 degrees Celsius. I have a negative value here, a negative value here. A negative divided by a negative is a positive number. So I get a number of 1.86 joules per gram degree Celsius. Specific heats must always be positive. Okay. For my practice problem, the one that you will do next, you should get the values listed here. Again, following the same setup, you're going to use the water equation first, and then you're going to use the metal information to solve for the metal. Your heat of water, you should get 627 joules, and therefore you should get a specific heat of your metal to be 1.82 joules per gram degree Celsius. Example number three, a 300, or excuse me, a 3.55 grams piece of aluminum, which has a specific heat of 0 0.897 joules per gram degree Celsius, decreases its temperature to 25 degrees Celsius when it's placed in 55 grams at 20 degrees Celsius. What is the initial temperature of the aluminum? Well, again, I portion it out from my waters and my aluminum. Water, my mass is 55 grams. My final temperature is 25, initial is 20. The change in temperature then is 5 degrees Celsius. I know that my specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. That means I just need to locate my heat. For aluminum, I'm given my mass of 3.55 grams. My specific heat of 0 0.897 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I know my final heat of 25 degrees Celsius. I do not know my, my heat of the reaction, and I do not know my initial temperature. So first I'm going to solve for the Q of water. Q is MC delta T. I plug in my values of mass, specific heat, change in temperature, and I get a heat of water to be 1,149.5 joules per gram degree Celsius. Again, using my law, first law of thermodynamics, my Q of water is equal to the opposite of the Q of aluminum. So therefore, my heat of aluminum is negative 100, 149 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now I solve for the aluminum. I'm solving for my change in temperature. My change in temperature is equal to Q divided by M over C. So therefore, I plug in Q is negative 100, 149.5 joules per gram degree Celsius, divided by 3.55 grams, which is my mass, and my specific heat, 0 0.897 joules per gram degree Celsius. This gives me a value of my change in temperature being negative 361 degrees Celsius. So now I need to solve, knowing that my change in temperature is final temperature minus initial temperature. I plug in my values, I'm given my final temperature to be 25. I've solved for my change in temperature to be negative 361. So now I need to solve for my initial temperature. I subtract 25 from both sides, I get negative 386 is equal to negative initial temperature. A negative both sides can be dropped, or I can divide both sides by negative 1. And I get 386 degrees Celsius equal to my change in temperature. Next, you'll do practice problem number three. You're going to follow the same setup. For your Q, you should get negative 731.5 joules. For your change in temperature, you should get negative 129.3 degrees Celsius. 
And for your initial temperature, you should get 144.3 degrees Celsius.